BGSS are thrilled to be sponsoring the Young Software Engineer of the Year Awards 2021. It's truly inspiring to see the young talent that's coming out of Scottish universities. Every person nominated has shown innovation, engineering excellence, focus and determination. It just shows what a great place the tech sector in Scotland is. As a technology consultancy with three Scottish offices, we've seen firsthand the impact of the pandemic and skill shortages in Scotland. That is why we've increased our support for young talent initiatives and increased our own number of engineering academies. Finally, after a busy year in the IT industry, it's great to see so many faces at this awards dinner. I hope you all have a great evening and most of all, I wish the young software engineers who are shortlisted best of luck. My name is Maria Hughes and I studied computer science at the University of Strathclyde and my project is called the anonymization of data. The idea came from a project a proposal that one of my university lecturers put forward to do with anonymising data to see how data changes. I kind of took that project and ran, kind of made it my own and specialised it a wee bit. Data sets can be really useful um, from businesses to marketing but also more specifically for artificial intelligence. If you have more data, machine learning models can learn more and be more accurate. Obviously they need data to do this but you can't use personal data in accordance with you know, privacy laws such as GDPR. You know, it's important to keep data safe so anonymisation will make data safe. This tool could be used by anybody that has the large data sets available that could make money off of being able to redistribute them safely. So the first thing it does is going to read in the data set, so this is kind of your collection of data that you want to anonymise. From there it will take small steps to anonymise your data, things like names and IDs, they need to be removed because that's just going to be identifiable no matter what. You can control how much you strip out and what you strip out rather than just kind of a one size fits all. The user has kind of more control to anonymise what they want and how they want to do it. There's different ways that you want to have your data represented at the end. Currently my system only has it one way, you can't, you can't change that. So if you wanted to expand the software it would be to include different types of output as well as just what it currently does. This is the first time I've ever taken on a project on my own of this scale that you start and you finish all by yourself. A lot of the technologies I chose to use in my project I'd never used before so in hindsight it might not have been the best decision but it definitely threw me in the deep end and I got to kind of know a lot of technology quite quickly. Uh, how would somebody use this? It's currently a website so you can find a URL, upload your data set, anonymise, download the result and that's, that's it. So I could use it? If you want, yeah. <laughs> my name is Viktor Slavov and I studied at the University of Stirling. My dissertation topic is Implementing Virtualization-Based Software Protection in Java. It's a piece of software that protects Java code and it does so by obfuscating it and by, by, by changing it in a way that it's very hard to read but it is functionally the same. There's a lot of uh, standard and very well-known uh, software protections today which do a phenomenal job but uh, they are all for different programming languages. There's nothing really for Java but I thought I would uh, try to bring the state of the art and uh, create something new and something that would hopefully be a, a bigger challenge than anything so far. You take the protector and that, that is just a, a program that you run, you click on it, it opens. Then you take your uh, whatever Java program you have, which is also a file, it's called a Java file. And then you literally just drag one file on top of the other and it will just convert the same jar. It will create a new jar, uh, which will be the protector version. There's seemingly no change at all in, in the program. You run it, it does the exact same things, except the code inside has now been scrambled. It has been changed, there has been new code has been added. For, for the end user, it makes no difference or minimal difference. And then uh, for somebody who's trying to see how it works, it, it makes it a whole lot harder. I think it can definitely have a, a very big future if uh, multiple people come together to, to improve it. But at the current state, it is more of a prototype, more of a proof of concept that uh, is waiting to be taken to, to something more. My name is Stepan Bechta. Uh, I studied computing science and physics at the University of Aberdeen and my project is called Frederick, an artificial music creation assistant. 
Frederick is an application which allows humans and computers to collaborate when creating music. So this is the main goal of the project. Uh, there is also a second goal of the project, and that was to come up with a new method for evaluating computer-created music. I mean, I have a music background, um, so I suppose for my project I wanted to combine you know, this music background with my interest in machine learning, artificial intelligence, and with my interest in designing user interfaces. The goal is uh, that the system adapts to the user. The system adapts to each composer, to the composing style of the user. This collaborative process should be live, um, which means that the system should generate music as quickly as possible, so as not to hinder the creative process of the composer. One of the main use cases of the system is um, Imagine a composer who is, you know, struggling for inspiration. And the idea behind the system is that they sit behind a computer, they input maybe a little snippet of music that they've already composed, just a couple of chords, and they tell the system to continue that snippet of music. And the system then creates multiple continuations of that snippet of music in the style that they've chosen. And they can simply choose one of those continuations, add it to those existing chords, and then change the continuation itself to improve it. And then this whole uh, process can repeat indefinitely until the whole piece of music has been completed. So the next stage of the project would be to consult with actual potential users of the, of the piece of software. I have a working prototype, which I think is quite mature, but now I would have to find specific potential users of the system uh, to get feedback. Then I think um, it has the potential of being released as commercial software. My name is Ryan Anderson and I studied at the University of Dundee. My project was gyroscope based offline calibration and stabilisation for FPV drone video. My project is a piece of software which takes in video from an FPV drone which is typically quite shaky and uses uh, automatic calibration to remove lens distortion, then it stabilizes the video afterwards and outputs a nice smooth video. I let fly FPV drones as a hobby. FPV stands for first person view. So it's flown not through like looking at it in the sky, but through a video stream to typically a set of goggles or a screen or something like that. A year ago there was only uh, really one main software and it only worked with uh, GoPros specifically. So I, I decided like instead of buying the existing one which only works with GoPros and wouldn't work with anything else, I'd make my own for the project. The FPV drones, they pretty much all run on an open source firmware for the flight control and that has a data logger. So all of the gyroscope data that's used for in-flight is recorded to either an SD card or a bit of flash memory on the flight controller itself. You can just load it into the software, one click, it reads the file and it syncs it up with the video. I am planning to commercialize it like for like hobbyist FPV pilots. Like I'm not uh, planning to make it like a premier product because like I'm primarily making it for me. So anyone else who wants to use it, that's just a bonus really. It's on the final stages of development, so I'm hoping within a few months it'll be ready for like a first release. I'm planning to just uh, set up a website and uh, start selling it through that.